The Metro and Fallout series have always shared some pretty common similarities. They're both post-apocalyptic where you encounter a ton of weird and unique enemies that are kind of affected by the radiation going on or whatever it is that's going on. Each did have their own survival element, whether it was through some different difficulty options or Metro where it's more instilled. One of the big areas where it differed was the open world aspect of Fallout and the linear, more storytelling aspect of Metro. I'm not here to say one game is better than the other or anything like that, what I'm here to do is try and help you recreate some of that Metro experience in Fallout. Maybe you want to have some more diverse experiences. You don't want the linear aspects that were introduced by Metro, so you want to have the open world experience of Fallout, but not completely abandon some of the things that Metro did get right. This video is going to kind of be broken up into two parts. First, we're going to try and create an appropriate world using some of the different atmospheric and just really game-changing mods to make the Commonwealth feel more like something that would fit in the Metro series. Then we're going to go on to the individual character with armors and weapons that I think would fit in pretty well. If you guys do enjoy this video, you can consider subscribing or leave a like or a comment and it helps with the video's kind of ratings and get boosted more by YouTube's algorithm. It did take a very long time to make this video, but without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So the single most core mod in this video is going to be Fallout 2287 or Gas Mass of the Wasteland. What this mod is going to do is implement the Gas Mass mechanic into Fallout 4. It's almost exactly as you have it in the Metro series. This plays a pretty massive role in Metro and even beyond that it has a huge impact in Fallout. After installing this mod you're going to find that all the NPCs if they're above ground will be wearing similar gas masks, some of them faction specific, and you yourself are going to also have to use a gas mass if you want to stay above ground it really just adds in a whole new variable to the game you're gonna already have to worry about your health your food and your ammo but in addition you're gonna have to make sure you have enough filters to really make it through the next few days this mod is really well polished there's a few different options in settlement mode so you can actually have kind of a safe zone in your settlement not needing a gas mask even when above ground but even beyond that it features custom animations and all around again this mod has been updated even up until only a few months ago and it really is just a very polished and well-made mod that I definitely recommend you Using, even if you don't want to have a metro experience it's just a fun way to play the game and it really changes things up Weather is kind of a difficult part with Metro. You spend so much time underground and when you do get to above ground, the weather is typically very bleak and I hesitate to use the word mundane, but I don't know, it's hard to really embody. Well, I think Natural and Atmospheric Commonwealth is going to be the best weather mod for Fallout 4 to recreate that Metro weather. This is actually a really big mod. It adds in 70 new weather types, longer and darker nights that actually have a lot more variety in them. Sometimes things will be a bit brighter, sometimes nights will be a bit darker. And honestly, the reason I chose this mod is after going through a bunch of videos and images comparing Metro to Fallout 4 with NAC installed, I really felt like this was the best recreation or embodiment of how I pictured a Metro kind of weather in Fallout 4. Obviously, weather plays a much larger role in Fallout 4 because you are kind of having a lot more free time to wander about. This is one where hopefully the visuals in the background are kind of speaking for themselves. This also does change a lot of other aspects of the game, including interior lighting and just really the way lighting and visuals work in general. It's a very large mod. I'm only kind of going over the details very briefly because I only care about really the weather and visual aspects of this and trying to make Fallout more like Metro. So then something you may have been noticing in the background of parts of this video is snow. Metro does take place in Russia, and of course, Russia does have a lot of snow. It's a pretty big proponent of the Metro series in general, so the mod I do select is the Fallout 4 Seasons Project Winter. At the end of the day, what this mod is going to do is make the climate of Fallout feel just more wintry. There's going to be snow on the ground, the trees are going to be more bare, and just not really as much foliage will be around. I really think this is the best option out there right now. There's a few other snow mods. I know there's some on Xbox. I don't think Fallout 4 Seasons on Xbox just yet. Really, any you do choose, I think would work. I think to really get down the Metro aesthetic and environment, you are going to need a snow mod though. You can go for one of the lighter green mods, but that really isn't true to form. And in all three of the Metro games, even Exodus Snow is playing a major part. Again, a pretty simple mod, one that's pretty self-explanatory, but I think core to the experience. As I did say in the intro bit of this video, subway tunnels are a major part of the Metro series. It's really how you traverse and how humanity has managed to survive in the apocalypse. Taking that into consideration, we do have an option for Fallout 4, and that's going to be Subway Runner. This is a really cool mod that's going to add in and expand the subway system in Fallout 4. A system does exist in the base game, albeit it's very small and not nearly as expansive as the one with this mod. With Subway Runner installed, you'll find every once in a while a little door leading down into 
into the subway. Once down there, there's a few different options. You could go from point A to point B, actually traversing pretty large parts of the map. Maybe you're too scared to travel above ground or you just like having the shadows on your side. But even beyond that, there's actually a lot of enemies down there that have little camps or bases set up. It honestly feels very similar to Metro with this installed. I almost wonder if he had a lot of inspiration from the Metro series when creating this mod. All around, it's a great mod to install. It adds a lot to the game and really just, again, another whole new dynamic and a different way to travel. So now we're going to transition over to the individual or player side of things. First and foremost, we do have the Commonwealth Survivalist gear. This is a really cool mod that's basically going to add in what I think is going to most match the Metro aesthetic. There are some illegally ripped assets out there from the Metro series, so if you really want to look just like you do in Metro, you can have that option, but you have to go find that on your own. I'm not going to show you that. But Commonwealth Survivalist gear does have, again, a pretty similar aesthetic as the armors and clothing you will see in Metro. I think it fits in pretty well, and a lot of it is kind of bulk here to be more appropriate in snow there's like sweaters and longer pants and stuff like that which maybe that's a small aspect but a lot of the other survivalist gear does have tank tops and shorts even integrated into it and obviously that's not that appropriate but clothing is not enough i also think a core part is a backpack and for that we're going to choose the survivalist go bag actually by the same mod author tukey jones this is a really cool mod it's a mod that i have loved for a very long time basically it adds in backpacks that have integrated weapons on some of them as well as just some other accessories that you would need for survival. It's mainly an aesthetic mod that also does add some carry weight after crafting it, although that is optional. You only have to use that if you want to. I really think that completes the outfit. Obviously in Metro, since you're traveling so much, you do often have a backpack on your character as well as many of the other characters. And frankly, I just think it really completes the outfit and looks quite cool. So on the weapon side of things, we do have the AK-74M assault rifle. This is an extremely high quality weapon mod. It has a ton of different attachments, custom sounds, custom animations, really the whole nine yards. This is pretty core to the Metro series you've seen it a ton of times in that game and you've probably experienced it in Fallout 4 also. There's also the handmade rifle through the Nuka World DLC but I think this one's a bit higher quality and it's almost exactly a recreation of what's in Metro. But what is a primary weapon without a good secondary? For that I actually chose the handmade revolver. This isn't something you'll find directly in the Metro series but I think it's a really good gun because it's something that I think would fit into Fallout 4 and Metro quite well. It has a similar aesthetic that again would be applicable to both games. It has a kind of of thrown together and almost worn down look similar to the bastard gun in metro and honestly a ton of guns in fallout it is honestly a ton of fun to use there's a lot of customizability with this weapon considering it is kind of handmade and meant to be kind of a more rundown weapon you can make it more of a rifle or even just more of a regular revolver pistol but speaking of revolver pistols the final weapon i do have is the a shot this is a really cool gun that actually exists in metro and was recreated for fallout 4 it more or less is a shotgun pistol so it's going to be a pistol that you could put one shotgun shell into you and then fire freely. Again, this appears directly in Metro. I think it's a really cool gun and something that I personally have used in Fallout 4 for quite a while and I really just also think it's quite fun in Fallout. Creating this little list of weapons, it was kind of difficult because there are so many different weapon mods out there and not many of them are from Metro. There are some that you might be like, will fit into Metro better than others, but I really think you should go out and just pick whatever weapon mods you do want in your game in general. I'm sure you have a list already. It's a huge part of Fallout 4 modding, but these are the three that I think are really necessary to get the proper experience. So that's largely it. I think if you install all these mods and play the game with some of these weapons and gear, you will really have an experience as close as you could get to Metro. Of course, there are other mods out there that you could use to really more enhance the experience or take more specific things, but I wanted this to be more broad, just the mods that I think would really give you a good slate to kind of modify even further. Some other ones I would recommend are Reverb and Ambiance Overhaul, maybe something like NPCs Travel. That's a great and fun mod that I think would be pretty necessary. I know a mod a lot of you guys are having on your mind, probably some of you are already wrote it in the comments is Frost. This is a mod that's almost going to create Metro and Fallout 4 just on its own, but it lacks the customizability that you would have with these other mods, plus it changes the story aspect of Fallout. It's still in a very early beta, it definitely doesn't have the expandability of the base game, and of course with that mod installed you can't do the quests and story of the base game. You're going to be doing the Frost quest and story, which is very minimal. It's something that I think it's fun to play for maybe 10 to 20 hours, but not the hundreds that you could dump into vanilla Fallout. Regardless, it's a really cool mod and again it has the whole subway aspect that metro has and if you use gas mass of the commonwealth it's already going to have snow on the ground and a lot of people dressed in winter gear that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video if you guys want to see more content like this in the future let me know in the comments down below do you want me to try and recreate a different game in fallout i think it's an interesting concept for a series but i don't even know where i would go next as always again i thank you guys for watching i do hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you guys all next time later